So I jumped to the chance to do this project. When we first talked about making this lamp, I knew I wanted to push the boundaries of what I've done before. I've been experimenting with 3D printing ceramics. A friend of mine asked me to make a 1.3 metre tall lamp for his open plan living room. He wanted something that would create a focal point. Once we confirmed what we wanted to achieve, I got straight to work building it. So here I'm preparing the board to print on. I like to print on gypsum board. I'll lay a lightweight cloth over the top of it and spray it down with water to get it to lay flat. I found this is much the best way to print reliably as the gypsum board absorbs quite a lot of water from the print, allows it to dry more evenly. If I use the cloth on top of the board, it helps prevent it from sticking to the board as it dries as well. It lets the print slide off the board really easily. So the maximum height is about 50 cm from the print bed. This print is pretty big, but it's not gonna be big enough for the entire lamp. So I was going to split this lamp into pieces. The thing I really had to be careful with was to make sure that these pieces fitted really well together after they'd been fired. To make sure this worked, I designed a ledge for each one to sit on and a lip on top of that ledge that slots into the base of the next piece. Normally with a 3D printer is you print each layer on top of each other and then when it gets to an overhang, it just prints a longer layer like that and then it will print the wall on top. The problem is this, is what's supporting this point here? The answer on a plastic printer is simultaneously, it's printing support that will come up and just touch on that gap there. This whole section can be broken away and then you're left with your final piece. Now, I can't really do that with clay for two reasons. One is the way I'm printing as one long spiral all the way to the top. I cannot simultaneously print another spiral, so there's no way of printing that support at the same time. So what I'm going to do, start off the same, printing the layers on top of each other, but then when I get to the bit where I want to do the lip, instead of extending this line along, I'll start printing here and flowing down the side of the, then I'll print another one that'll be overlapping. Not quite as much material, so I've built up a lip. Then I can start building my tab on top of it like this and this is much more stable. This whole process is not something that normal slicers will do automatically. So to do this, I'm actually going into Blender and editing the G-code one layer at a time. As the clay will move a little while it's drying and fired, I left a 1.6 mm gap for tolerance between the two parts. And when I finished printing all the parts, most of them fitted really nicely together, but the bottom most piece... So this is the fourth time I've printed this, even after all these attempts, I think you can see they still don't line up nicely. I must be missing something, but I don't know what it is. And um, before the start of this project, I'd been experimenting. I'd learned that printing on the damp cloth lets the cloth slip across the board and lets it shrink more evenly. No matter how slow and how careful I was with the drying, it was still warping. Got no time left to test anymore. So I'm gonna have to change the design. The inspiration for this design was a mushroom. The stem is not always a single structure. The bottom of the stem has a trim surrounding it that Wikipedia tells me is called a vulva. I have been accused in the comments of creating fertility-related lamps in the past, but I'd like to point out this has nothing to do with it. I added a vulva trim to the top of the base. This creates an overlap covering the mismatch between the two of them. It turns out that adding this trim really enhances the design. It adds just the right kind of detail to feel more natural. And now that it all fits together, I assembled the lamp for glazing. I wanted the glaze to highlight the curves of the stem while also helping connect them together. The base is turquoise and then a darker sparkly one over the top to help accent the highlights and flow between one piece and the next. Firing time. And I thought I'd solved all the issues, but now the top half doesn't fit. That 1.6 mm gap is just not enough to account for the movement in this final firing. My only option really is to I was really worried about breaking or chipping this. At this point, it's my only solution. I've run out of time. I have to admit, choosing that 1.6 mm gap for the clearance between the parts was just a bit of guesswork. And sometimes that deadline adds just enough pressure to force you into problem solving mode rather than stay experimenting forever. In this case, the lamp turned out to be everything I hoped for. And my friend is also really happy with it.